All right, you want me to get into this? Let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to talk about tracking. Um, and tracking is new for me. I always tracked a little bit, but I really got into it about a year ago. And it was when I was introduced to a company called Sisu, S I S U dot co, C O. And uh, Sisu is just a big old nerdy platform, man. It takes all your numbers and you can work with different companies. Like we work with a company called RealSync and they help you integrate Sisu with follow-up bots or Sisu with, you know, the Red X dialer, Sisu with what, whatever, whatever they can uh, work with. And they've got different integrators and everything else, but then it's all automated. It's not you with a notepad writing things down at the end of the day. Although if that's what you got and that's what your budget allows, do it, right? But we got Sisu. Once I got Sisu, I became obsessed. Like it's a game. It gamifies everything. So it's kind of fun to set different standards with the team and then set daily challenges, weekly challenges, monthly challenges, have little prizes. So you got carrots at the end because we're all driven by like, honestly, you could give me a 50 cent piece of paper that says I'm the winner this week because I made the most calls. That fires me up. So whatever gets them fired up, right? So you turn into a game. So there are 11 big things that we track. And this isn't Joe Rosen's idea, who's been doing this for a year. This is Sisu, who works with a lot of the biggest real estate teams, not only through the US, but throughout the world. Um, these are the 11 big trackables. You can track anything you want in Sisu. You can track uh, how many times you go to the bathroom if you want. You can track anything you want. But here are the 11 big ones, right? Uh, and it, it's a funnel. It all starts over here with conversations, okay? Now, through the, like I said, we've got real sync. Through your integration and everything else, you can define what a conversation is, right? And I'm not going to say there's a right definition or wrong definition, but whatever your definition is, I would suggest you keep it consistent. Don't change it every three months or your data is going to be off, right? So a conversation for us is it has to happen in our CRM. We use follow-up boss. And so that means when I go to my phone, I'm not calling like you would normally call somebody. I'm going to go to my phone. I'm going to go to the follow-up boss app. I'm going to go find Tristan, the seller, and I'm going to call Tristan from the app. And then when I'm talking to him, it tracks everything, right? Uh, so in there, it's got to be through the app, which guys, that's a great way to run a business. If you've got a CRM, you should be using it. No yellow sticky notes. And I say that with such confidence because I was a yellow sticky note guy. Quit being a yellow sticky note guy. Get it in the doggone database, right? Get it in your CRM. If you're with some of these bigger companies, they've got free CRMs. Use them. If you're not with a bigger company that doesn't have a CRM, you can go get, I, I don't know, Lion Desk. What's Lion Desk? 10, 20 bucks. I mean, these things are simple. They're cheap. Yeah, there, there's absolutely no reason not to use it. And I'll tell you, I was selling a lot of houses without using it. So I'm guilty too. Don't feel bad. We're all here to learn, right? Once I started using it, boom, it exploded. So it's integrating with it. And what was the app? It's the follow-up boss app, right? Which is the app for um, the follow-up boss CRM. And I'll I can use it up. really. Say that again. Oh, I'll put the follow-up boss link okay. too. So I can use it. I like using it on my laptop best, but honestly, I've gotten really good at it with the phone. Uh, so it works really well with both, right? But here's the 11 big trackables. It's a funnel. So the first one is conversations. What's a conversation? A conversation is through the app and it's gotta be at least 60 seconds. So if I call somebody through Red X and I'm like, hey, Tristan, Sam, call him. Hey, go screw yourself, Joe. Awesome. Have a great day. That doesn't count. It's gotta be at least a minute, right? That's so so good. you can determine, does them calling me count? Does me calling them? Is that the only one that counts? You can define it however you want. And, and I really don't care. It doesn't matter. Because once you get your number, you can figure out all of your conversion ratios and now you can build a plan around it, right? So the first one is conversations. Now your funnel splits into two. You've got a top row of five bubbles and a bottom row of five bubbles, right? One's for sellers, one's for buyers. So the first bubble, the first row of bubbles, both for the buyer and the seller, is appointment set. So from your conversations... How many appointments are you setting? After that, the next two bubbles, one for a seller, one for a buyer, is appointments met. How many actually mm -hmm. showed up? And you want to look at both of those numbers because you're not going to have the same number. Some people are going to cancel, not show up, ghost you, whatever it is. And you want to see 
what the difference is between normal and you, between agent one and agent two for you team leaders, you'll be able to tell so quickly and easily where people's weaknesses are and it helps coach them. And we'll get into that if we've got more time at the end, uh, but that helps a lot with that, right? So we've got conversations, appointments set, appointment met, then it goes into signed. Now, this is the one we have a little bit of a, 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 a differing opinion on with some people, right? For me, for our team, signed on the list side isn't just the fact that you've got uh, an agreement signed. It has to be in the MLS. It's got to be active because I've had a listing before where I sign it on March 3rd and it's going to be on on March 6th. And on March 5th, they call me and they decided not to list for whatever reason. So for that reason, it is not signed until it's actually in the MLS. Okay, that's signed. On the buy side, I've got to have a buyer's rep with them and I submitted an offer. So if I go show Tristan seven houses, that's one appointment. Well, that's a conversation. It's an appointment set, an appointment met. And then if he writes an offer on a house, that's a signed. Doesn't mean it got approved or it got agreed upon, but it's, it's signed, right? Now, if that one fails, that's where we stop right there. And then when I go show him two more houses tomorrow and he puts another offer in, that's another appointment set, another appointment met, and another signed. Why do we track them all like that? Why am I tracking that? I'm going out with Tristan two, three, four, five times and submitting two, three, four offers because I want to see the conversion rates amongst my different realtors. I want to see who gets you know, the least amount of appointments for an offer signed. Now, we need to ask that person, what are you doing? What's different about what you're doing than whatever this agent who maybe goes out seven times before they get an offer signed? What's that agent doing? It's probably drastically different. To have a conversation with those two is going to be very powerful, especially for that agent who's got to show seven times before they get an offer, whereas this one is showing maybe two times for every offer written, right? That's a, a drastic difference. Uh, cut me off anytime, man. I'll just keep talking for half an hour if you let me. So, Dude, I want you to talk for half an hour. This is okay. I'm, I that's took cool. some notes. I'm like set, met. There's a difference. So I love that. Yeah. So then we get into signed, and then of course we get into the fun one, which is under contract. And then after under contract, uh, and that means all parties have signed and it's been delivered, right? That's under contract. And then after that is closed, and that's when you actually you get that payday, baby. So then it's closed, right? So here's some numbers we've got. Why do I tell you these numbers? Because I want you to think not just about those 11 bubbles, those 11 trackables, but how can you read into them? What can you get out of that data that might be helpful for you? Here's some things that I pulled. I think I pulled six stats here. It takes us, my team, since January 1st, it takes us 8.21 conversations to get a scheduled appointment. Isn't that powerful? Now, if you know I want one appointment a day, you have to average eight to nine conversations a day. And boom, it, it's not magic. You've done the numbers. You've worked it backwards. You know that's what gets me one appointment a day. Perfect, right? It takes 2.75 buyer appointments for one offer to be submitted. That's incredibly powerful. Now, if I've got an agent who comes on and they're doing one offer per every 1.5, that guy needs to lead training. What are you doing, right? If I get another agent and they're taking 5.5 showings before they get an offer, we probably need to train that person. They need to get into training with the person who's doing 1.5 showings. So now you can see who's weak and what they're weak on, right? Uh, Sandra, thank you. I appreciate that. So it takes 34.73 conversations to get one under contract. Okay, so if you want one under contract, 35 conversations, you want 52 sales in a year, have 35 conversations in a week, right? Now, your numbers are going to be different. Yes, sir. Uh, so on that quick note, you the assumption for the 35 conversations, the assumption is that you actually know what you're saying, right? That's the assumption. Like you have a yeah, pretty good dialogue, right? Yes. We're not talking about people that fumble their way through a conversation. That's a much higher, I would say it's like a hundred at that point. But if you're pretty good at it, you're good. We're doing 35. Yeah. And I will say too, your lead source is going to matter, right? If I'm circle prospecting, it, it's going to take more conversations, but of course I can whip through those quicker. If I've got like, we also do Y Lopo uh, paid leads. Okay. My conversion rate is going to be a little bit higher with those but I got to pay thousands of dollars for those. So if you're a brand new agent, you might not want to do that. So there's pros and cons to all of these, 
But once you start building this stuff, it's really important to do it for three to six months. I like doing six months minimum. Look at the numbers. Don't look at your own emotions. I can't tell you how many people hate cold calling and they love open houses. But if you can get them to look at the actual closing rates and you can see that you make more per hour cold calling than you do with open houses, would you cold call? A lot of people would, right? An intelligent business person, in my opinion, would cold call. But what are your emotions going to tell you if you hate cold calling? They're going to tell they're going to remind you of those three people that bought from an open. You're going to say, dude, opens kill it for me. I'm going to keep doing open houses, right? Don't let your emotions dictate. Let the business dictate. Let the numbers dictate, right? That's my opinion. That's how I run my business. Um, but great point. I appreciate that. So we've worked out what are the gross commissions we brought in divided by conversations. And now I'm looking at pendings and assuming they're going to close too, right? Because this is data that's only five months old. But looking at all that, if they all close, we're making $301.92 per conversation. That's a lot of dough per conversation, right? Now I will tell you, our stronger agents tend to have more conversations. Our weaker agents, they're weaker for a reason, right? They're, they show up to training less. They show up to role-playing less. They're probably less engaged, put in less effort, whatever it is. They challenge themselves less. So these numbers are going to be skewed towards the stronger agents. If you're a brand new agent, that doesn't mean stop or don't try or, man, I, you know, I'm not going to make that much. Per what it means is you're not going to do that now. But go get into a role-playing session. Go get into training. Your brokerage probably offers training. If they don't, ask them, what can I do? Come to Tristan. Come to me. Somebody will connect you with some... There's so much training out there. It doesn't, it really doesn't even matter what brokerage you're with anymore. I'm not saying that brokerage or that brokerage doesn't have better training, but if you're saying I'm failing because of training, you're hundred percent wrong. Everybody has access to endless amounts of not just training, but phenomenally valuable training. There's a lot of great training out there. Um, this number <laughs> sucks. I hate this number. Yeah, go ahead. Well, before the sucky number, um, yeah. what's your email address so that if people have questions for you, we can get that sure. before everyone Anytime. starts typing in all that. Sure. Stuff. It's all <laughs> spelled out. It's find a Florida house at Gmail. I appreciate that. So that here's the number I want to improve on. I hate this number. Um, we get 43.75% of our listing appointments to list with us. That's a hair less than half. I feel like we should be around 70%. Um, but it is what it is, right? Uh, this one I'm very proud of. Now, I know January numbers published by NAR said that it was 4.1 offers per listing. That was the average. So if you work those numbers backwards, that means roughly 20, I think it's 23.9% of offers should be getting accepted, right? One divided by 4.1, I think, is 23.9. It's close. We're at 67.86 of our offers getting accepted. That's no accident. That's the training we do. That's the offers we write, right? So mm -hmm. knowing that is critically important. So why am I looking so deeply into these numbers? I'm looking deeply into them because if I'm getting, like I can look at the, the, the conversion rates at every single point. How many conversations are you turning into appointments set? If it's really low, you're probably not going for the close. You're not going for the appointment. So let's work on LP Mom a little bit, right? You guys know what LP Mom is with, with a buyer, right. right? What location or listing are you looking at? What's the price? Uh, what's your motivation? Um, are you working with an agent? Uh, are you going to be paying with cash or do you get a mortgage? That's your M. And then the last day, the big one, the one that I care about more than any of is get the dog on appointment, baby. You got to get that appointment. So just going through that with your buyers, the last thing you do is you get the appointment. If you're not getting the appointment, what great training to go through to give you practice doing that, right? Get into a role-playing session. There's a lot of them out there. If you go into any one of these big groups, somebody will get you into role. We have a role-playing session. It's brokerage agnostic. Anybody can go. It doesn't matter. But I know there's more out there, right? Um, if you're getting appointments set, but appointments met is low. I can look at that as a team lead, as a coach, and I can say, there's something going on here. Are you texting them the day before to confirm the appointment? 
right? Are you maybe sending them something in the mail to make it look like you are the man, you are the woman, you're the one that they want. If you do that, your conversion rates will go up from appointment set to appointment met, right? That's an easy coaching tool. I can look at how many appointments are you getting per offers written. And if that's low, now I know we got to work on your closing and maybe your questions and your pre-qualification questions, expectation management up front. What's your buyer counseling look like? Um, what does your listing presentation look like? Give it to me. I want to see it. If you're only converting this amount of people, maybe we need to work on that, right? If your signed is not turning into pendings, now I can look at, let's go into your offers, right? From a buyer's standpoint, if you're a buyer's agent, how are you writing your offers? Maybe your offers are just not competitive. You're not using the tools that we've taught you. You're not offering to do some sort of appraisal coverage, or maybe there's ways to get rid of the inspection. We've got different strategies with that as well. Maybe you're not using escalation clauses because you're not comfortable with them. A lot of different things that could be going on, but let's look at your contracts, right? From the list side, if you're getting all kinds of listings, but they're not going under contract, especially now, how are you pricing them? How are you marketing them? What's your verbiage look like? Are you using professional photos? What do the photos look like? Are you doing research in the backdrop? Are you picking up your phone when agents and buyers are calling you to see the property? All of those things are questions that are easy, obvious questions for a leader to ask when they see that conversion rate low. And then when you get from or under contract to closing, if that ratio is low, now I know there's something missing, right? Maybe you're writing a bunch of contracts or, that are getting accepted, but they've got 10,000 contingencies leaving the door open for failure, right? Let's talk about how to wrap some of those up before we write the offer to, to get as few contingencies as possible in there, right? And there's a million great things to that. Um, with your listings, same thing. Maybe you're accepting offers or you're, you're you know, pushing your, your sellers to accept offers that are too loose. Uh, Sisu, Carol, S-I-S-U dot co, C-O. So all those things really help the leader and they help you individually, whether you're on a team or not, to see kind of what you're good at, what you're not good at. And then obviously there are ways to focus on what it is you need to improve on. Uh, I think it's really great too, as a team lead, but really as a single agent too, if I know you're a brand new agent and you're coming to me and you say, Joe, I want to make a hundred grand. How do I do it? I can look at new agent conversion numbers and I can say new agents need whatever, 20 conversations to get this and they need this and this and this and this. So you need to do 13 conversations a day to get a hundred thousand dollars. I can reverse engineer those numbers if I've got, let's say six plus, uh, months of numbers, LP Mama is location or listing. The P is price. What price are you at? The M, you missed an M there. The M is, are you paying with a mortgage or cash? Uh, the other A is, are you working with an agent? The other M is, what is your motivation? And the last day, my favorite is appointment, right? Get that appointment. L-P-M-A-M-A. -A -A. Um, so you can reverse engineer and build that plan. And I can tell an agent confidently this is how many conversations you need to have to make a hundred grand. Oh, by the way, if you want to cut those conversations down for next year, or if you want to leave them the same, but increase your pay, let's get you into some training. Let's get you into some role-playing. And now you're going to improve your skills, right? Uh, we talked about that. We talked about that. And then just the gamification. It's so motivating to look at these numbers. I just have one of my agents, right? Because I've been doing admin stuff and, and pre prepping for this and everything else. So my calls, I think I've had six conversations today. This brand new kid had 15 and he was bragging about it in our team text. And I said, you got me for now, but I'm not quitting today until I can text that I've done at least one more conversation than you. So now what do you think he's doing while I'm sitting here talking with you guys? He's out trying to kick my butt. So when I get back this afternoon, I can't catch up. Is that a good problem or what? That's an awesome oh, problem. Dude. Yeah. And what yes. am I going to do as a team leader? I don't want some 23-year-old punk beating me. No, no. Joe, how big is your team? We've got seven plus me, plus a transaction coordinator and an operations manager. All right. I love that, dude. Thank you. There's a deep question. I'm going to save it towards, you've got five minutes. So I'll save it for like four minutes. I'm good. Bring them on. Okay, here we go. 
Olivia Gott. Very good question. She says, let me put this in my middle here. I'm a TCEAISA operations manager. <laughs> that's the hell job. is that? <laughs> that's her job to do. Okay. Wow. Uh, Olivia, that's amazing. Uh, for a top producing team in Missouri, I'm, I'm having major kickback from the real estate agents I'm working with for processes, system implementation. My mm. boss has been a realtor for over 17 years here in Missouri, and he hired me to help with the flow of the company, but his real estate agents aren't wanting to implement the systems. Where do I start? I'm four months into working for this team and I'm overwhelmed. That's an awesome That's, question. That is and, an awesome question, dude. Yeah, it is. I, so, and I'll tell you, I've got people who are on board with my systems and I've got people who aren't. I don't have anybody who pushes back. I got people who just don't do it, right? They're, they're fully on board. If I, hey, are you on board with this? Yeah, I'm on board with this, but they just don't execute. You're going to have that. 87% of people fail out. It is what it is. But I can share with you what I'm doing. Um, I can tell you what's been successful and what hasn't been successful. I lead from the front. So for me, there are things I don't want to do either systems wise. I know they work, but I've, I've figured out like I have to do it as a leader. I have to do it. And if you're in that position, you are a leader on that team, right? So you and the lead agent, the team leader has to do everything. So I would question first, is that lead agent doing it? Um, then you've got to build a culture around falling in love with the process, and I love always to talk about, and this fits in with my talk on Sisu too. I love to talk about Shark Tank. I've seen so many people go into Shark Tank and they've got a phenomenal product, phenomenal sales. And Mark Cuban will tell them, just not interested. Great product, great sales, but you don't seem to have a system. You don't really know your numbers. So I feel like this thing could fall apart at any time. Then you'll get somebody who comes in with average sales and an average product, but they know their numbers, they know their systems, they know their processes. And Mark Cuban will say, I'm sold. We need to tweak some things so we can up your sales. We got to get you promoted over here, but you've got a system that is just awesome. We can get you going. Will that story work for everybody? It will work if the person pitching it, which should be your team leader, pitches it with passion, devotion, and they stick to it and actually do it. What's an appointment, Ruby? An appointment is I'm showing up, like I'm meeting with you to show homes or I'm meeting with you to discuss putting your home in the market. That's an appointment. Um, so, you know, I would try to build a culture around that, but you've got to have passion. You've got to have passion. If you just pitch the system, they're, they're not going to listen. Probably they're not going to change. But if you come in, you've got like, I, I've really gotten into, you have to be a great storyteller. You've got to bring the love, the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm with you. And that should come from the top. It should come from the leader. It should be supported with you, but it's got to come from the leader. And you can, like, I'll tell you what I did. I gave him about two months and I said, you're either on board or you're off the team. You can still be at the brokerage, but you're not going to be on my team. You're going to be on your own. And you still get little perks with me, but you're not going to get it all. And you're not going to get my time. If you want it, I'm telling you the way to run a business. You're not running a business. This is a hobby for you. And as a hobby, you're going to sell 10, 15, 20 houses. If you want to run a business, we're going to run it the right way. And the right way is with processes and systems, right? So, and then I, I just, I built minimum standards. I laid them all out. I explained them to everybody. I made them sign them. And we're implementing them next week. So we'll see. Maybe I'll have a team of four next week. I was going to say, but there's probably going to be some people probably, jumping off. Like, can't yep. handle that. I'm guessing I'm going to lose two or three people. Um, but I'm guessing it's going to be the people who aren't producing already. True. My studs aren't going to care because they're already meeting and exceeding the minimum standards I've set out. But those people in the middle... I've already seen all of them, all the people that were in the middle. I knew the duds would leave. The people in the middle have all signed it. Now, will they follow through or will I have to kick them off? We'll see. But that's what I've done. Does it work? I haven't been in long enough to tell you. Somebody asked earlier how long I've been doing this. Um, I got to Florida a little less than three years ago, and I've been running a team probably for about two years. I love that, Joe. So, Joe, Aaron, I'm just so much, man. Oh, That's man, my pleasure. <laughs> Always my pleasure. Thank you so much. You rock, man. buddy. 
Always so, so great to talk to you, buddy. Thank it's you for great that. to talk to you. You're, you're absolutely amazing. And what you do for the community is incredible. I appreciate you. Thanks, Joe. Now go beat your young 23 year olds because we can't have you losing. Let's go. All right, brother. Have a good one. <laughs> Take care.